Upgrading your 3D printer to a dual Z-axis. Want to see how it's done? Well, I'll give you the full how-to and explain just how beneficial this can be to your printer and your 3D prints. It's all in today's video, and it's coming up next. When everything starts to fade, you don't have to be afraid. Take my hand now. All right, what's up, everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dad, and yes, we are talking about 3D printer upgrades. So branching off of my last video where we upgraded this Ender 3 Neo, I briefly covered some of the uh, nice upgrades that I added to this machine uh, to increase efficiency and print quality on an already pretty great printer. But today I'm going to dive in a little bit deeper and explain the whole process of the dual Z axis upgrade. Thanks to Timu, they supplied me with this awesome Creality Dual Z Access Kit, and today I'm gonna to go over the full in-depth tutorial of just how to get this piece installed. I can't thank Timu enough for supplying me with this Dual Z Access Kit, along with all the other accessories on this printer. Timu has a wide, wide variety of different 3D printer options, accessories, and upgrades. Everything from the Dual Z Access Kit you'll see here today to some of the other light bars, filament holders, along with upgraded extruders, linear rails, BL touches, nozzles, more and more and more. So go ahead and make sure to download their app and check them out. They have great offers for new app users. And of course, I'll supply you with my exclusive coupon code where you can get great upgrades like this for a fraction of the cost. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in and get in this dual Z access kit installed. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna be installing this dual Z kit here on this brand new Ender 3 Neo. I decided to do it all in one shot. This is a little bit of a kit printer, so there's a lot more assembly. I just figured it'd be easier to just do it while I'm putting it together versus assembling it and then disassembling it. But obviously, if you have your 3D printer already set up, you are gonna have to do a little bit of disassembly to install this dual Z kit. This Creality Dual Z Kit is gonna give you everything you need to convert your printer. It has all the rods, all the brackets, all the harnesses, everything you need to easily upgrade your 3D printer. So we're gonna be putting another stepper motor on the left side of the printer. It's gonna look just like this here. It has the same hardware and brackets. You can see on the side that has the original stepper motor, there's two pre-drilled holes where the screws can go in, but on the other side, there isn't. There's just a hole that fastens and secures the power supply in which we're gonna be relocating anyway. So what we have to to do is use the supplied hardware and some of the lead screws and the bracket to screw that into place onto the Z gantry. So first we want to grab the stepper motor and the stepper motor bracket and grab the recommended M screws and fasten that onto the stepper motor. Next we are going to take the lead screws and fasten those onto that black bracket. Then you want to take those square anchor nuts and kind of line them up with the channels that are going on that Z gantry. Push it in place so it lines up and then you're going to go ahead and tighten that so the stepper motor is firmly mounted in place. Next you can loosen the screws on your Z coupler. Go ahead get that in place on your stepper motor. Go ahead and just firmly tighten those back in place and prepare for installation of the Z-Rod. Next, we'll need to remove this cover so we can gain access to the motherboard and run a harness. There's one screw on the top and then there are three on the bottom. Go ahead and loosen those to gain access to the motherboard. Next, you wanna locate the four harness plugs on the bottom of the motherboard. One of those is going to be labeled Z. If anything, you can find the other end of the harness which has the Z label on it and then just kind of trace that back uh, through the grommet of wires that it has. Go ahead and remove zip ties or tape or anything that may be obstructing your ability to remove this harness. Uh, you can see here that that is gonna be an X plug. The other one is gonna be E for the extruder and there's the Z harness right there. So we have to unplug that one and get that harness out and install the new one. All of these harnesses are kept in place with a small piece of hot glue, a bead of hot glue. So go ahead and remove that. Once that harness is unplugged, you can go ahead and fish that old harness out and get ready to install the new one. This kit does come with some cord concealers. So if you want your wires to look as factory as possible, or you're just a little bit of a neat freak, you can go ahead and slide that on the harness and then go ahead and plug the single end into the Z port on the motherboard. And then the dual plugs that come out the other end, you're gonna plug one up into the one stepper motor and the other plug into the other and then it's just time to do a little bit of wire management to just kind of fish that through uh, zip tie what you need to make it nice and clean and orderly uh, it does have to go through that little opening channel there so you can use things like cloth tape or electrical tape to keep those wires in place we want to be able to put that cover back over that harness with no obstruction and nothing getting pinched so now we technically have the stepper motors wired, we have to add the second brace for the Z because you can see on the Ender 3, it's just a single Z, so it really only has one supporting bracket here. So we have to take our X gantry off and add the additional Z bracket on the other end of the gantry. So there will be a little disassembly that we'll have to do. Here you can see this is the new bracket that's gonna go right there. So what we basically have to do is just simply remove the old hardware that's holding all of these rollers on and we have to install new ones that are just a little bit longer because obviously we have to 
bracket this new Z support brace onto this X gantry. So go ahead and remove all of that old hardware that are holding the rollers on. But you'll notice on this third one here that it doesn't quite come off because it's actually held in place by the pre-existing bracket that's already on there. So uh, what we have to do is actually take these two little black screws off here. So go ahead and loosen those. And then once you have those off, you will be able to remove that pre-existing screw and add the bigger one on that will be long enough to support the roller and the new bracket that we're gonna put on. So now just go ahead and grab the new hardware and do the complete opposite of what you just did, putting everything back in place on the X gantry. You can see here now that we're installing the spacers and the new bracket, go ahead and tighten that on and this will be ready to be reinstalled back onto the printer. Once you have everything nice and tight and we're ready to reinstall the X gantry, I actually like to loosen my Z rods and remove them. Upon installation, I found it a little bit easier uh, getting the X gantry on. Trying to force it down with these Z rods on, it could cause binding. You could possibly bend the rod or cross thread them or something like that. So what I like to do is remove those rods and then go ahead and line the X gantry back up. Now, if it's a little bit tight trying to get it on, you can go ahead and loosen the eccentric nuts. Uh, those will help it slide in a little bit better. The eccentric nuts nuts are located right here on each side of the gantry. Uh, loosen those a little bit and then just give it a little bit of a push or a pull and then slide it down. Make sure you're not feeling any binding or anything caught up and just kind of let that rest on the build plate right here and then we'll start reinstalling our Z-Rods. With your X gantry gently resting on your build plate, you can go ahead and grab each Z-Rod and gently thread them in place. The whole time I'm doing this, I do like to use a level uh, just to make sure that the gantry isn't getting pushed up or pulled down. Now, if it is on level, what you can do is just very simply loosen the screw at the top and you can manually turn the rod left or right and just keep an eye at your level. Once it's level, just kind of hold the Z rod in place and then you can retighten that screw and it'll keep it nice and level for you. Once everything looks level, you can go ahead and put the top brace back on the top of the printer with the supplied and factory screws that you've already had. Then we can move on to installing the Z stabilizers. These are just gonna help cut down on vibration, give a little bit more support uh, when printing at higher heights. They're gonna go on right here and use a similar screw to what we use to put that new stepper motor in. So go ahead and just kind of get that lined up, have those rear square nuts line up in the channel, push and make sure they're flush, and then go ahead and tighten them in place. The stabilizer bracket should be firm and in place on the frame, but it should supply a little bit of wiggle room within the Z as shown here. And here I'm keeping that level in place just to make sure nothing's getting thrown off course. Next, we have to install our new power supply bracket. Normally this power supply is flush right up against where that stepper motor is, but we can't put it there anymore. So this kit does supply you with a relocation bracket. And again, it has those lead screw and square bolts to firmly lock that in place in the channel. So go ahead and get that tightened in place. Go ahead and plug your main power in and then all that's left here. If you are setting your printer up for the first time to go ahead and plug in your X, your Y, your extruder, all those harnesses are left over. There's no firmware update or reflashing that you have to do with this install. But what I do recommend doing is as soon as you're done, home your printer, make sure that it's not making any noises or anything sounds out of place, go ahead and extend the Z all the way up to as high as it can go. And then again, let it drop all the way back down to the bill plate just to make sure that there's no binding and anything's getting caught up. Once we've established that there's no binding or obstruction within the Z, you can go ahead and continue on with a test print. The test print is gonna solidify that everything was installed properly and there's no obstruction or anything within the Z. We can see here by inspecting our bunny that there's no banding, that the Z isn't getting caught up. Uh, anything is uneven, that the gantry stayed level and overall the install came out great. So now that we know that the install is working properly and everything's wrapped up, let me wrap up this video and give you my final thoughts. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There is the video on the how-to of how to add a second Z-axis converting your printer to a dual Z. Really, really great upgrade and really not too hard to do. You know, even if you're new to 3D printing, everything is plug and play. It's basically just taking it apart and putting it back together. Uh, on this particular printer, the Ender 3 Neo is a little bit of a kit. I just decided to do it in one shot. This is really going to pay dividends, especially over time. It's gonna cut down on a lot of wear and tear on your rollers and your belts. It's gonna help keep that gantry level. It's really just gonna result in a lot better prints, especially over time. For all you speed nuts out there, if you are wanting to print a little bit faster. It's obviously gonna stabilize the hot end and the X gantry substantially more having two rods versus one. I know a couple of the printers that I have still have single Z rods and just over time, belts loosen, eccentric nuts get loose. And you know, mid print, that is uh, that could be detrimental to the quality of your print. So doing something like this, it's gonna help you in multiple areas, but definitely help keep the quality of your prints up and the wear on your printer down.
I want to thank you guys for tuning in today and watching the video. If you did like it and enjoy it, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all on the install, anything that maybe wasn't covered or something that you're just not sure of, go ahead and drop me a comment. You know I will hit you back. And of course, if you do enjoy all things 3D printing, cosplay, Marvel, Funko Pops, DIY, everything I'm doing on the channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. I have a lot more in-depth videos, uh, particularly on this, different upgrades that I have already done and some more upgrades that I'm gonna be doing. So make sure to click the subscribe button, click the notification bell and come back and see me. And once again, a big thank you to Timu for supplying me with the upgraded parts to help increase the efficiency of this machine. They have tons and tons and tons of different upgrade parts for 3D printers. They have way too many to list. And the great thing is, is a lot of these are compatible with other printers. So even if it says it's for a Creality printer, a little bit of research, a little bit of digging, a little bit of ingenuity, you can get these to work with other printers. So make sure to download that app, check out all the upgrades they have for killer, killer price, and make sure to enter my coupon code in the search bar here to see some of the upgrades and accessories you can get for an awesome price. Well, that's it for this video, guys. I got a bunch of new parts I got to put into this new Ender 3 Neo, and I got a bunch of projects calling my name. So make sure to give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, and make sure to click the subscribe button. Until next time, it's DW out. Later. Take my hand now.